Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial video. In this video, we are gonna explore a new module that I actually haven't seen yet, um, but I've messed around with it already, and there's a few things that I wanna tell you about it. It's called the JAR analysis. I'll show you more about that one in just a minute. Okay, so I am using version 2.3.22. Now, uh, earlier this month, as far as the date of recording goes, uh, 0.25 has been released, and it's an incremental update as you know, by the last two letters, if you're if you're familiar with how updates work on these these kinds of uh, apps and programs, it's an incremental update. And the release note says that improved accessibility uh, access or options. So I'm assuming that um, they've made some updates to the the you know the option menu or maybe keyboard accessibility that kind of thing. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It just says improved accessibility, so that's great. But in any case, we will move on from there and talk about our uh, this our. Our current video here. So there are a few things that we got to do to get JAR active. Like I said, I have it right here, JAR. Now, what does JAR stand for? It's called Just About Right Analysis. And I'll tell you all the things uh, about it after we get the module set up. So how do you find it? Well, you go to your modules and you type, or you go to manage, or you go to installed or available, right? So installed or available are uh, two ways that you can find it. And so I'm going to go to available and start typing in just, oops, that's a U. Uh, there we go. JAR, Just About Right Data Analysis, version one um, by Kate's Esteban. Just about right scale and penalty analysis for a given product. Now, this is the important aspect of this. Imagine you are a marketing person or advertising, something like that, involved in business, and you want to make sure that your products are going uh, in the right production and, and getting to the right people and their allure, their qualities, their attributes, that's an important word, are just about right. They're not too good or they're not too bad. You are looking for Goldilocks here. That's what JAR is. It's the Goldilocks data analysis. So we don't want it too hard or too soft. We want it just about right. And so you add that to your thing. You'll click install. I already have it installed, so that's why it's there. And then you'll close this and it'll come up as uh, the default little uh, illustration here and JAR. And the only thing that you can do is just about right analysis. But what if you don't, what if you don't know where to start with your data? So let's go ahead and open up one of their existing data files for this particular analysis module and mess around with that. So let's go up to the hamburger menu to open and we're going to go to data library. Now I have all of these data folders here, but the one we're going to use for this, which this was in alphabetic order, is the sensory evaluation data analysis. So I'm going to click it once. It's going to open it. And so we're going to have uh, sensory profile data on chocolates. We're going to have, you can you know, have perfumes, napping data on perfumes, sorting data on perfumes, and then jar data on milkshakes. So this is, and you can see here that it is color coded to be uh, for JAR analysis. So this is just a sample document, a sample data set to get us started on JAR. So it's about milkshakes. So they're going to be attributes about three different kinds of milkshakes. So we're going to go ahead and um, do the JAR analysis on this data set. So I'm going to click it once and it's going to open up this data set. So let me pull this over so you can see all of the data. So we have, uh, let's see, how many panelists do we end up having? So we have 141 total data points, but uh, what looks to be um, 48 panelists. And each panelist did three products, product 859, product 972, and product 284. Okay. And they gave us liking scores for each of those, which is great. We're going to end up using this in our analysis. So you'll notice that I've got eight, I think that's eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, sorry, 10 attributes. Uh, and we have color, so the color of the milkshake, the fluidity, how how uh, viscous is it, right? Is it too fluid? Is it, uh, you know, which means it's like really melty or is it too like hard? Uh, that is what we're going to look at. Uh, odor, initial odor. Um, I don't know what van means here, but the odor van, or I don't honestly know. The odor, uh, since this is a milkshake, you usually put fruit in it. You can, I guess, if you want to. Uh, so is the fruit odor too much? Sweetness, of course, milkshake should be sweet. So how, but not too sweet, right? Acidity. Since there are uh, additional in ingredients, these are our fruit smoothies. These are fruit milkshakes. Uh, fruit has acid in it. So is it too much or is it too little? Like how much cranberries or raspberries or strawberries should go in the texture, right? So when you put fruit into milkshakes, texture, you want it to be creamy and maybe a little um, ice cream-esque, right? Lush, that kind of stuff. But when you put fruit in, you know, chunks, seeds, that kind of thing, uh, how much the fruit tastes and taste van. I honestly couldn't tell you what van means here, but is it too much? Not enough. You can see that we have a lot of words in here. We have jar, which is great. Um, and then we have not enough and too much and all of that stuff. If you try to do a just about right analysis on this, this is what will happen. The problem here, as you can see, is that all of this is text-based nominal, right? That's what the A stands for in this Venn diagram. And you're going to end up with um, it not being able to count your frequencies. And that's not good because then you can't do a weighted penalty analysis, okay? Which 
you need to be able to do to make determinations about your products. So we're going to have to keep that in mind. And the way that we're going to do that is we got to fix. We got to fix this data set. So first and foremost, we are going to go for an attribute, a five attribute scale, okay? Attribute scale points. So one through five. You can do three, you can do seven, you can do nine. The problem with changing this to three is that some of these have five, right? So let me show you odor van here. We've got not enough odor van, okay? And then really not enough. So the problem is we can't change everything to three, bad, just about right, or too bad, or too good, just about right, that kind of thing. Um, for each of these attributes, we're going to have to set up five for each of these. So I'm going to do this first on color. Okay, show you how to do this on color. And then I'm just going to skip forward after I've done all of the rest of them, just because I'm going to, it's going to, I'm going to be doing them quietly. So I'm not going to, otherwise it's going to take me longer. So what we're going to do to change color is you can see that I have four here. And so I'm going to assume that um, the one that's not represented in this list is a little vivid because we have a little plain and two plain, and then we have two vivid. So I'm assuming that the one that's not represented is a little too vivid, right? A little vivid. Which doesn't really make any sense when you think about it, but that's what happens when you use Likert scales for these kinds of things. In each of these categories, jar is going to be represented by three. That's the midpoint of the scale, and that's why you only saw negative, or negative. And that's why you only saw odd numbers on this, right? Three, five, seven, and nine, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and change this, and then I'm gonna change the other ones, and we will come back right after we do this one. Okay, so again, I'm gonna change this to three. The great news about Jamovi is it will keep the word jar down here, but it will change all of these numbers to three. Do not change these. Because if you change these, what will happen is all of this information will go away. The great news about Jamovi is that as long as you have numbers here, it will be able to run the calculation. All right, so just about right is three. And you can put these in the order that you want to, um, just to make sure that it makes sense to you. For two plane, I'm going to make that a one, and then I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to move that up to the top. So one is going to be two plane. And then a little plane is going to be two. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to move that above three. And then two vivid is going to be five. So the one that nobody mentioned on this one is four, which would be a little vivid. And then I hit enter there. And it's all in the right order. So you just go ahead and change these to the numbers that you want. And as you can see here, these have all been changed. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay. So I'll be back with you when I've done all the rest of the nine. All righty. So here we have all of them all set up here. We don't need that as too big anymore. Chloe! Stop it! All right, so here we have all of them set up. We've got our uh, our panelists, our products, and we've got our liking scores, and then numerical values for all ten of our uh, our ten of our our uh, attributes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the jar. So let's take a look here. We're gonna go into the just about right analysis. Now I'm gonna do all of them all at once, but I think you're gonna realize that it's weird to do a, J, a, a JAR or a JAR with all of my products all at once. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Let me show you what it looks like when we do it this way. And now we don't need to worry about having that error anymore because we're going to put our color attributes um, all the way through to taste van. And you can see now that all of our numbers really hit the areas. Now, the JAR are all of my threes. Okay, so this is a an exact count for all threes in my data. And these are all ones and twos for low and all fours and fives for high. And then we have percentage out of 100% for each of these. These all sum to 100%. So this is all three milkshakes and their 10 attributes. Okay, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do it this way. Okay, and you can do a liking analysis by putting liking in there. And what it'll do, it'll do a weighted penalty analysis and give you a T value. But the issue is I don't have... Um, values that go into the weighted penalty, mean drop low and mean drop high. It just, it doesn't work, okay? Um, these are these are p-values for my Tukey tests, okay? And whether or not it's significant. I have no weighted penalties in here, so it's not going to tell us. We can also get uh, the attribute bar plot, which tells us, you know, the percentage for low, jar is green and high is red. We wanna make sure that this is mostly green. Um, and then here's the ternary plot, which puts all of our, uh, percentages on a triangle, right? And so you can then plot each value according to their percentages. And we can see that acidity is the, because you want you want that to be uh, up here, closer up here, right? Our just about right percentage is 80%, but our high percentages is 20. And our low is like too low is value. Let's see, acidity. Oh yeah, you got to make sure that this, you're not going to get all of your values in here. So acidity was right next to texture. I think this is acidity, right? So our value for uh, this is percentage is 1.42. Yeah, it's over here, which is great, right? That's what we want to see. And then our low percentage was 19.1. Okay, so that's what that's what this ternary plot shows you. And then the diagnostic plot uh, doesn't show up. I don't know if it's there's a problem there or what. But the issue is we've got all of our products in here at once, which doesn't make any sense, right? Um, 
they're they're all liked at some different level, but really what you want to do is you want to break it out by product. Okay, so how do we do that? We use filters to break it out by product. So let's go ahead and close that one. And I want to go ahead and make a filter. Filters, here we go. So we're going to add a filter and um, we are going, well, we're going to add a filter. Sorry, those were add rows and delete rows. <laughs> we're going to add a filter and we're going to say that um, we're going to say product. Oops, I don't know why I'm putting in all capitals. Product, hi -yi. Double equals because that's what we want and we're going to get product 859. Okay, and then we're going to hit enter. And you can see here that filter one is giving us 859 and we're going to have 48 of those. That's what we should have. Okay, so we're going to close that filter. And then if we slide the just about right analysis, we're going to do another jar. Okay, just about right analysis. We're going to put color in here. Okay, and then liking in the overall liking. Okay, and you can see here, counted that. <laughs> Doesn't look like I counted that. And so you can see here, we actually now have our weighted penalties and our mean drops and everything like that because we have gotten rid of all of that, right? Oh, it looks like it it changed it for my initial one. Okay, I don't I don't like that, but whatever. Um, so then we can get our ternary plot and our, let's see if diagnostic plot works now. There we go. Yeah, see, so the, the problem that, we were having was we were putting all of the, the we were putting all three of the products into the same jar which doesn't make any sense okay so here we have our jars counts our frequency counts right? and you can see that it says consumer research so this is for, for product 859 right and so color has a weighted um value to it odor for fruit yes and then yes and yes so here's the problem with doing so you're gonna have to like reset each one every time you do this because you're, you're gonna get the same output for each test so it's really uh, important when you set up your filters that you do that so you essentially delete and redo it every single time um, because the previous one doesn't hold the fact that all of them are represented in there. So keep that in mind. Um, fluidity on product 859 is bad. This is, it's really bad. And um, if we go to uh, fluidity here, right, it's the top one in each case, it's not significant. There's no penalty to it. I don't know essentially what we're looking for here, but um, penalty is, uh, fluidity is bad. Look at, you don't want to be in this corner over here. Look how bad fluidity is. Acidity is still the best. Texture also pretty bad okay texture has too many lows okay so not enough as opposed to too much and this is our diagnostic plots here okay one to 20 so percent of customer criticizing right we want 20 percent sweetness high is a big issue okay taste is almost an issue mean drop for overall liking right so sweetness so it's a little sweet sweetness is here in the middle okay acidity low that's good taste van not bad color Hi, where's color? Okay, so that tells you the diagnostic thresholds for each of these ideas. If you have a better way to explain, please drop that in the comments. I'm not entirely, I've never seen diagnostic plots before. But for a way to handle this information using Jamovi, it's a pretty cool looking module. It's very helpful on determining which products are good, which products are not good uh, based on focus groups. So you get this information from focus groups. They all had 10 attributes to measure. They had three products to measure each of these three attributes or each of these 10 attributes on. And then you can compare each of these attributes for each of these products. What I would like to see in this module is a, 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 because we already have a product variable, a way to add the product variable as a way to have this all chunked out in a single uh, in a single value and have it be optional, have it be an optional grouping. Like right, if we go into t-tests, right? And we go to or or we go into descriptives, right? And we open up descriptives. We have a split by. We have the split by here. I think it would be amazing if the jar had a split by. So you could just take product and you do that. And in this case, you would have three. Uh, you'd have the three different products. That would be pretty amazing. And then it would give you the list of. It would give you each of these what you've requested by however many products you had. So you can look at all of them and compare them instead of having to do this three separate times or five separate times or ten separate times, depending on how many products you had in a single sitting. So that's the real test, right? That's the real uh, way to have an advanced analysis. So consider that my uh, my module making friend, consider that or improve upon it if you can get the, the code from GitHub or something like that. But in any case, that's how you do just about right analysis in Jamovi if you are doing some consumer research. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions or other general feedback, please leave that in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.